especially for those that have some kind of deficits like um, chronic pain issues, fibromyalgia, um, issues like that, and also like to paint or do crafts. Um, right now we are mostly doing painting with acrylics, but who knows, maybe we can add to that, do some journaling or something like that later. I like to encourage us to keep moving, keep trying, um, take breaks, take care of ourselves, use proper body mechanics, and use equipment that is um, adaptable for um, whatever issues we might have. So we will delve into that from time to time. But right now, I just want us to have fun, get to know each other a little bit better, and continue uh, building each other. I so this is my red oxide, um, this is my cat yellow, and I haven't really gone into the um, phthalo blue or the phthalo green or the burnt umber yet. That's probably what I'm going to add on top. I'm going to need a little bit more cad yellow. Now a little bit more water. I have my, I don't have, I didn't get my containers out. I usually have my containers of water, several containers of water at one time, um, just to not have to deal with the changing water. But I really wasn't planning on painting tonight. I had somewhere to be, I always have somewhere to go on Thursday nights to have a religious meeting. And I always need my, um, spiritual food but I figured since I was already dressed even though I did change um, I just kind of was in the mood to just keep it going and make a video for you guys there now this is what I like to do too is flip my painting around um, I do not paint in an awkward way position. So people with fibromyalgia understand that. I'm going to let it dry. When it dries, I don't know what I'm going to add. I kind of feel like typically I go with flowers, grasses. Um, I'm going to be adding something. So we'll see what happens. We were going to end up with this a mason jar. So this is the beginning of it. It hasn't turned into one yet. And we're going to use purple. Purple will look really pretty with the um, with the orange. Okay, I'm going to use um, dioxine purple, dioxine purple, and that's right here. Let me turn it. And then I have white in here too, but you can't see it too well because it's white on white. Okay. All right. Now I have my camera on more close up so that you could see it a little better. And I'll try to speak up a little more too. I was a little quiet on the part one video. So I'm mixing my uh, purple with my white and getting it a, a nice light color, uh, kind of a lavender color. Okay, These mason jars did get to be pretty popular lately. I have my rags um, handy. My rags come from my grandchildren's two small pajamas. Anything that I could turn into a rag now. I really like painting too because it's really helped me to be more conscious of recycling. Um, it's kind of encouraging the hoarder in me too, unfortunately. Um, I'm not there, but there's a little one deep down in there somewhere. And the painting makes it want to come out. So I'm trying to find that balance so that doesn't happen, okay? But it is easy to start saving things because you think, oh, I could use this for painting. Um, maybe you could use it for garbage. <laughs> but um, the containers, yes, a lot of the containers. If you see my palette, um, that is a to-go container. So I cut my palette paper to size, and um, then all I have to do is put a lid on it and then um, save the rest for later. So some things are good to save for painting, really good to do that. 
And this is what I try to encourage, things that make it easier so that we can paint. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to get my little mason jar painted up here. We're going to add details later. So, dipping a little water. I use um, golden mostly for painting. It's just a little bit more predictable for me. I haven't had experiences of um, golden paints being the quality being poor. Um, I have with some other professional grade paints where they were uh, old and separating before I even started using them. And I haven't been painting long enough for that to, to happen. These professional paints are supposed to last seven years. And I know I haven't been painting near that long, so if I get bad paint, it's not because I've kept it too long. So, kind of when you're at the store, you'll notice that some paint, um, some tubes of paint look a little like they've been squeezed. And they probably have because people like me now are... Um, looking at them, letting just a teeny bit come up to the top so that you could see it before you bring it home because you just don't want that surprise. Uh, if it's slimy and gritty looking, that's not good. It's supposed to look like butter. It's supposed to be very smooth and soft and just like butter. Melted butter, almost melted. Not really melted, but like soft butter. My orange is kind of coming through a little bit, so I'm just trying to cover it enough. This is not a how-to paint, but more of a paint along for people like me who need to break it up, try to keep their posture uh, in a way that is not going to cause problems later. Be encouraging that we can do this. We could use this as art therapy. If we try to use this as art therapy and our posture is poor or our habits are poor um, and we're trying too long, we're trying to endure too long, then it's not, it's not any longer... Uh, useful for us because it would just add to our pain. So we're trying to make it so that this does not add to our pain. And I want to make this jar a little bit darker on the bottom, okay, because my light's on the top. So I might as well start that now while I can, while I have the paint out. Make it a little darker on the bottom. So I don't have to try to do that uh, later. I could do it now. And then just add the layers later because acrylic painting is all about layering. Um, hopefully this jar just doesn't get bigger and bigger and bigger. What I have here, uh, you might be wondering what I outlined it with if you're not familiar with this method, is uh, chalk. It's just plain white chalk. And if I had a lighter background, I, I have gray chalk for that. Okay, so that's kind of later on. I might add to it to get it a little bit uh, thicker and less see-through at the bottom. But you know, it's supposed to be a jar. So it might look kind of nice uh, having a little bit of transparency to it anyway. Okay. I don't like to go too much into what I've already done without letting it dry first. So I'm trying to resist that. Why is it so hard to have the patience to wait until it dries before we go back into it when it's partially dry and start lifting paint? I don't know why that's such a challenge for us, but it is. This looks so crooked on here, but I don't think it's as crooked as it looks on the... Maybe it is. 
know, sometimes it's a good sometimes it's a good idea to uh, look at something from a different angle because you could pick up on some some problems that you can't see with your naked eye. So let me see if that looks better. It does look a little better. It looks like it could even come down a little bit more. There we go. Now it doesn't look so wonky. I love that word because I only started hearing that word when I started painting. And I think um, it's kind of a British word, has a, um, its roots are British, English, I don't know. So, there. There's my mason jar. I have to paint the top part. I'm going to use a little bit lighter at the top. Okay, there's the top part of my jar. Okay, and I think I'm going to um, use a little darker purple right here going across, you know, that little thread part. I want to be able to see that. Okay. And then there's another little thread part at the top, toward the top, that you should be able to see. So I extended it just a little past the, the top of the lid. I'll try it, try it again. And again, I don't think I wait it long enough for it to dry. Then I'm going to go a little bit more here. I'm going to give it a more of a slight curve. Okay. And fill that in. Okay. Kind of, kind of. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to let this dry. You see where I've kind of, you know, the edges don't matter so much because we are going to be adding shadows and highlights and things like that later. Hi, I'm back. I just wanted to start continuing with our, our purple mason jar. I'd like to start adding some um, shading and maybe some highlights. I am Angela Green, in case you fell onto my channel. And I'd like to encourage those that have fibromyalgia or other chronic illnesses to keep painting. We always say keep painting, and that includes all of us that can possibly try to paint. I have seen videos with those that have very serious deficits that can still paint and enjoy painting. They have problems with spasticity and all kinds of things. So if we can find ways to make our environment adaptable and uh, still be able to enjoy painting, this is what I encourage. I have a group on um, Facebook and we're a small group and that's what we do. We encourage each other with uh, painting even though we have fibromyalgia. We're a strong group, we're a patient group and a lot of these things have developed from our having to endure. So sometimes good things can come out of things that are troublesome. So let's get on with it. We're going to start shading a little bit of the sides. Um, I like the surprise of highlights and um, reflections. So we're going to start with the things that are, are a little bit more predictable and easier to manage. Okay. So I have dioxine, dioxine purple. Um, 
and titanium white. So uh, I would show you my palette, but that's not that complicated. <laughs> so I'm just dipping a little bit into, I have a lot of white toward the top in mixed in with my purple. You see some white flecks just from the chalk because I made a tracing of the mason jar, uh, not even a tracing, I freehanded it, but you can make a tracing. And if you need uh, a tracing, you want me to make a traceable, I could figure out how to do that and um, put that up on Facebook so that you could do that, okay? Um, you don't have to be able to draw, although being able to draw is kind of, a, it's an asset. I have to say it does come in handy. But if you have problems drawing, you can always use a traceable and it's still your art, okay? So it's still allowed. There's no rules against it. Um, okay, so I made this uh, a little bit darker um, purple to use on the edges uh, to give it a more rounded look, okay? So with anything that's round that you're painting. Uh, we've painted some paint brushes, we've painted trees, anything that's like that that's kind of rounded. Um, you want to use your br brush strokes in your favor to um, emphasize the roundness of the jar, okay? And I always make that more obvious on the bottom. I go across more on the bottom. Okay, so I got a little bit, a little bit of a shine on here now, which I like. A little bit of shine coming from the same direction. And then what I'm going to do is I'll put a little bit of shine on the other side. Not quite as much, but a little bit. A little bit of shine on this side too. All right. Because if it's if it's a if the jar is uh, op um, see through, then you're gonna it's gonna pick up a little bit of shine from the other side. So you're gonna want the other side to be coming through too. All right. So I want it to look just a little translucent. Okay. And then here I can see that my impatience is uh it's not it's not good because I can see a little bit there we go of lifting again. Okay. I'm liking this. I'm liking it. All right. And I'm going to get some of this see-through stuff, too. All right. So what do you think so far? Is it looking like a jar? And I think I'm going to put a little bit more of a... Oh, I better let it... I better let it dry. I better let it dry because... Uh, I definitely don't want it to start lifting now trying to put in a white reflection. I want a bit more of an obvious white reflection. Just a little afraid to do that right now. Okay. So we're going to build on this and uh, we're going to be really, I think, pleasantly surprised when we get done. Okay. We're going to keep building on it. I don't have a reference, you know. I'm just winging it, um, playing around as I go, letting my brush lead me, and uh, we'll see what happens, okay? Hi, I'm Angela Green. Most of you know me that have found my channel, but for those that have not um, met me before, I am starting a group with um, people that have fibromyalgia to help encourage them to keep painting. So our emphasis are on um, continuing to paint and not have to deal with as much frustration. If we can come up with ways to avoid frustration, um, encourage 
um, taking care of ourselves, proper body mechanics, proper posture, um, and um, little tips and tricks to uh, make it a little bit easier for us to paint, enjoy painting, and not have to suffer afterwards, okay? So that's the point of um, my videos, that's the point of the group Painting with Fibromyalgia, and you'll find us in um, Facebook, okay? So you can look for us and request to be accepted, and if this is the group for you, which we're a wonderful group, We'll be happy to have you okay in the meantime I'll keep uh, trying to um, have videos available um, for YouTube just to encourage us uh, keep us going help us to grow so that more people can benefit from us okay so I'm gonna continue with this this is going to be part four of painting the mason jar okay so hopefully you could paint along with me this is more of a paint along than it is a um how-to video and we are using acrylics on canvas okay um, i have the background which is uh, a light cad red and it uh, also has a cad yellow in it and the brightness is toned down a little bit with red oxide, okay? So that's how I painted the background. Um, you could look at that in the previous videos. All right, so now we have the mason jar. Um, the last video, I just added a little bit more white just to see um, because the jar had darkened up. And I wanted it to be a little bit um, lighter, not so dark purple. And now I see that these look a little bit square. Um, to you, to me, um, they don't on my original eye-to-eye um, -eye canvas, but looking at the um, monitor, I can see where the highlights look a little bit square. We want to emphasize the roundness of the jar, so I want to play around and see if I could um, emphasize that, the roundness of the jar a little bit more, so... Maybe I'll come down with it instead of just, there we go. This is, I like this better in this case, okay? Coming down with the um, highlights. And now it feels like the jar is uh, rounded, okay? So I kind of like that. Okay. Kind of went on top of what I had, let the brush strokes show, and that's how that ended up. Okay, so I think I'm going to tone it down a little bit. It's a little too bright to me. I'll tone it down a little bit. I'm adding a little bit more dioxide, uh, dioxine purple. I don't know why I'm having trouble with that word today. I don't normally have that much trouble with that word. Okay. All right, so that it's not so white, 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 white. Okay. Kind of like that. And it might just look so bright because of the um, fact that it's on camera. So. All right, I like that. A little bit more over here. All right. Because the light is coming from the top. So, and then I, I don't mind having a little bit down here. Kind of gives a shape to the um, jar. Okay and um, a little bit of the darker kind of gives a shape to the jar going coming from the other way because then you'll have your light dark which i kind of lost a little bit um, at the beginning of the painting okay so there we go there's a little bit too much white in my brush so 
So um, people that don't understand what fibromyalgia is, um, the medical, they're just starting to learn more about it and accept it as a true illness. Um, people that suffer from it didn't have to be convinced because we weren't always like this. Um, there are those that have asked us, well, exactly how do you feel? Well, we kind of feel like uh, we've been run over by a train, especially early in the morning. We feel that way. Uh, we have an achiness that feels general all over, similar to when you have the flu, um, just without fever and those other symptoms. But the achiness is very similar to that. Um, it comes and goes. Sometimes the weather affects us, most of us. Some of us are affected more by heat and others of us are affected more by cold, um, air conditioning, that kind of thing. So um, we're not all exactly alike in our symptoms, but there are a lot of similarities. And um, uh, one of those things that almost all of us have problems with is when it flares up, um, we could feel it coming on, and we get that uh, tired, achy, general uh, blah feeling, and then um, the stiffness comes and follows. And so, um, and then sometimes we have other symptoms that go along with it, um, IBS, and uh, some people suffer from migraines with it. So, you know, there's a lot of things that's associated with it that you really wouldn't understand or you wouldn't know, you wouldn't connect it even if you have it unless you read about it and find out that, yeah, some of these things just go with fibromyalgia. So, um, anyway, I'm just playing with this a little bit. Just playing with it. Blending, just making it look a little bit more like a jar. Yeah. I'm kind of liking that. Okay. I'm just making it look a little bit more like a jar. A little blending. All right. I'm liking that. So, um, what do, what we what I'm kind of thinking about doing with this is not putting flowers in it. I am really enjoying putting paintbrushes in my paintings. Um, that is my recent passion as far as uh, uh, kind of a pastime is concerned. Um, it's kind of what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> uh, no, it's not late. And we, all, we always want to put our lights and darks um, in any painting because it gives it a little depth. Um, you don't want it to be just flat one color. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I want to put my dark dark under the, right under the uh, lip of the, uh, the edges of the little um, threaded part because with mason jars, they have that threaded part so that you could um, screw the top on. So, of course, those would have shadows. So, I'm trying to put the shadows in under my, under my little threaded sections. Okay. And then, you know, of course, that's going to be a little bit darker under there, too. Okay. All right. And okay, so I kind of like that. I don't know how it looks on there. And then um, under here, of course, I want that to be a little, a little um, shaded too. I want that to stay a little darker, but I like that. Okay. And maybe blend it a little right here. Okay. So you see that? Now, so I think I already told you and mentioned that um, I want to put paintbrushes in here. So just scruffing that up a little bit. It's just looking a little too. 
um, most of us end up going back and forth with things. And then by the time you get done doing all your layers and stuff, um, eventually you get satisfied, I guess. Okay, I'm liking it. Okay. Okay, so I kind of have an advantage of being able to see it on the monitor too. Normally, we have to step back, take a picture, um, come back, take a picture in another lighted, uh, another lighted area. Um, but so, you know, this doing it on here kind of like, that's a little plus right there, being able to see it on the monitor. Okay. Okay, I like that. I want to blend that a little bit. And then I want to start, I can't wait to start doing, uh, I can't wait to start doing the paintbrushes on the top. Because I have some little ideas for that too. Okay. All right. Uh, with the paintbrushes, what I'd like to do is um, I want to ruin this jar and run some paint down the jar. We know what our water jars look like when we paint, so we could really have fun with that. And that's where all my colors could come in. It would have been easy for me to put flowers in here and all that, but, um, yeah, and I think I might have seen some brushes in jars, but I really want to take it to the next level. And if we do break it up, I'm cheating right here. Well, it's not really cheating, but, um, if I could, if I could, uh, trace a paintbrush because they're right here next to me, then why not? Okay. So, okay. And there, and then the ferrules way down here, which I had no idea when I was, uh, painting another painting that I had a paintbrush in. I had the feral short. Okay. I'm going to put a fan brush in here. I don't know where I'll have the fan brush. Maybe I'll have the short. Maybe I'll have a short one. I want it to look natural like it's really leaning out of the brush. This might be good. I mean out of the jar. So here, I'll do this. Okay, can you see that? Then I'll do this. Okay. That's good. And I'll have this kind of like going behind this guy. This isn't the fan brush that um, Angela Anderson gave me. My nice one. I still didn't put that in my collection yet. I don't want to get it dirty yet. <laughs> Okay, and now I want a taller one, um, but I don't want them all to look the same. So I thought maybe I could have one that has this shape to it. Obviously, I this one doesn't get much use. It's not really a, a lesson on the kind of brushes they are, <laughs> but it could be. I'm going to put a nice slant on this, make it taller. I don't want everything to be the same height. I don't want too much of a slant. Let's do this. Okay, that's good. All right, and then we'll do that. Okay, that's, that's good right there. Okay, I like that. Now, I have to have, uh, maybe I'll have a skinnier one going this way. And I'll have a skinny one going this way. I'll have this top part. Oh, the ferrule's not slung on it. It's funny how you want to do that. You go up and then you go this way. 
this brush. Um, maybe I'll do a short one right here. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll do a short one. Oh, I'll make it like this. I'll make it like this. And this is going to be a really squatty one. I kind of like that and I don't want them all I don't want them all like this in a row because that would not be how they are so I'm going to have one going this way all right and I'm going to have it sticking out well let's have it all in the same line Grandchildren, soft pajamas, pieces, cut into rags. Very, I really like it. I wish it was white, but I'll know when it gets loaded up with paint. And I think it'll be obvious. Um, I should line this up a little bit. I don't want to be out of line here. Oh, I'm having a lot of trouble with that. Oh, am I dealing with that perspective thing? Is that what my problem is? Okay. So getting back to fibromyalgia, most of us, here's a look right here. Most of us um, don't know, didn't know what was going on when we got diagnosed. All we knew was we didn't feel good, and it just didn't go away. And that's what that's what got us going to the doctors. There we go. Um, that's what got us going to find out what in the world is going on. So now they've come up with a lot of um, medications and some of them work for some people, others work for other people. And some people, nothing seems to work. So they just kind of have to uh, figure out how to manage their health in some other way. There, I like that. That looks good. So I don't know if you could see it. So let me see if you could, if I could get you to see it a little bit better. Here's the paint brushes done in chalk sticking out of the gel. I like the jar better too now that I've kind of like stopped staring at it. You know how you have to step away or just not look at it for a while? Um, but I'm starting to like that a little bit better too the little reflections or whatever in the jar. Okay, so I'm going to hurry up and finish this. Um, I'd like to get going on it. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is paint some of the... I'm going to paint some of the um, handles like a whiter color and some of the handles I don't want it too white and some of the handles I'm going to paint a, more of a brown color okay because usually we we have a mixture we try out different brands okay and you know we're going to have to shade the handles a little bit too All right, so that's the one. And I think we'll do um, maybe this one in the same color. Okay, try to make it narrower as we go down. And then, um, 
this is like a really light purple which is fine because you know it doesn't hurt to bring out similar colors elsewhere in the painting so this is like a whitish purple almost the color of the reflection okay and then i'm going to try to get a i had a um let's see if i can find it oh I had a burnt umber in my other palette. I put these together. I cut my palette paper and then I keep my containers to go containers and I put them, uh, cut them to fit. So it makes it nice because you don't have to get rid of your paints because they've dried out. So it's a wet palette and a lot of people like those. Okay. That worked. I had a little bit of that purplish color on the brush. Oh, that worked out actually. And this chalk is easily, uh, gets easily wiped away. follow the same line which is not easy for my vision that's why I complain about perspective because I have vision issues it throws that all off all right but people with vision problems can paint too okay then I need the really dark for the paintbrush All right, I think I could use this. Yes. Okay. All right, that's one. And here's another one. I'm gonna use a more of a blacker color for the um, barrel. I'm going to clean this up with the chalk, clean the chalk up. These are going to look a lot better. And I don't want them to look perfect because we use brushes, right? So I'm going to go here with this. If a little of the background shows, it's okay because it is a brush. So it has a little uh, striation in there, so that's good. Okay. All right. And then I think I'll add a little green to this brown to get a little darker uh, for the ferro. It's a little fat. And instead of making that, fixing that, what am I going to do? I'm going to make the brush fatter. Duh. That's a lot easier. Okay. No more green in there. Yeah. I'll fix that. That's easy fix. All right, and get this brush, get this a little better. Okay, I'll come back and get that later. And now I'm gonna do the fan brush. Wouldn't it be easier to do the fan brush with a fan brush? One swipe, I wonder if it will work like that. Probably not. I did think of it earlier though. All right. It's a little bit more tedious than I thought it would be. 
Okay. Well, I don't want perfect brushes. The top part, I don't want those to look. I want them to look a little scraggly. Okay. And then I'll do the, this one a little bit more. Um, like a round brush. Which, that's what people, I think, are quite usually with painting or this this shape of a brush but I like that I, I'm liking this even though I'm not finished I'm liking it all right I think I'm gonna mix a little blue with the green in order to get more of a black color for the feral a little brown a little all of that stuff most of these colors mixed together. I don't have any red on here. That would really bring it to, to a black, kind of a black color. Yeah, I like that. That looks nice. And I didn't give this one a feral at all. Did I? Oh, it's kind of fat. I'm not going to get that yet. I'll get a skinnier brush. Okay, that's good. All right, that's good. And let me lighten this up a little bit. So I have different colors on this palette from before, from when I was doing the background. So I could play, I could play with that. And then this one needs a, needs that dark. Okay, so I did finish the painting. The video stopped a little short, but I wanted to show you the end results. I added some shading onto the um, brush handles, and I um, emphasized the highlights a little bit better. And then I added the effects of the um, dirty paint jar with the paint drips. I matched the... Um, the hard body, the uh, professional thicker paints to the top edges of the jar. And then I match that with the um, liquid acrylic paints. So these are also by Golden. And um, so the artist colors. So I kind of match them, the yellows with the yellows and the uh, turquoise with the turquoise. And then the cad red um, with the cad red on the liquid ones here. Okay, so this is what I used. I made a little drip, and what I did was tilt it until I got it where I wanted it. Let it sit, let it dry a little bit, and then I laid it flat. Then I went to the next drip. So this is how it turned out. Bring it a little closer for you. Okay. Kind of looks like glare, so it must be effective the way I did the highlights. All right, and then you can see the paint jar. That's my favorite part. Okay, so that ends this series, and I look forward to painting again for you, um, and hopefully painting with you if you try to uh, get your supplies out. They're under more in um, this particular video. And I think what I'm going to do is um, put the uh, um, brushes, the canvas, and the colors up in the other videos as well. Okay, so it's been fun painting with you, and you all have a great day. Bye-bye.